Hi, this is Ron Sipsik, and in this video we're going to take a look at uh, GDP measurement and we're going to use the value added approach to partition GDP or to separate GDP into time frames as well as by countries. Now let me explain this. For, uh, let's talk about an, an iPhone for instance. We know that iPhone parts are assembled all over uh, Asia. We know that China basically assembles or fabricates the iPhone. But much of the marketing and engineering design is actually done in places like the United States. So when you buy an iPhone, you're actually buying a product that has been produced by a number of countries. How do we assign the value of an iPhone to the countries in which the output was produced? In other words, part of the iPhone was made in America. Part of the iPhone was made perhaps in Korea. Perhaps part of the iPhone was made in China. The point is, which country gets credit for the iPhone? Or do we divide the value of the iPhone between these countries? Well, we're going to use an example here to show how the value-added approach can be used to partition GDP uh, in such a way that we can assign GDP to different countries. Moreover, uh, products are sometimes built over time and we may want to assign part of the value of the product to one year and assign another part of the product to, to, to another year. So the purpose of this video is to look at the value added approach and to apply it to the GDP calculation and uh, to see how we can partition, uh, partition uh, the value of a product over time and by country. Now remember what GDP is. GDP uh, stands for gross domestic product and if we define GDP, one, it's the dollar value of what? Of dot, dot, dot. Two, final output, final output, which would be goods and services, dot, dot, dot. Three, produced Domestically, domestically would be within the geographic boundaries of the country in question. Dot, dot, dot. Four, within a year's time. So GDP is what we would call a flow. It's measured over a specific period of time. So in, in, in thinking about GDP, it's a measure of value. It's a measure of final output. It's a measure of domestic output. And it's a measure of current, current output. We're only going to count, uh, let's say we're talking about the year 2016. We're only going to count output in 2016 GDP that was produced in 2016. So GDP is a, is a measure of value, it's an estimation of value, and it's based on the final output produced domestically within a year's time. Now, let me go ahead and move that definition up because we wanna, wanna actually do a little, little problem here. So let me do a hypothetical product. I'm not going to do an iPhone because I don't actually know what the breakdown would be on an iPhone. I do know that iPhones are made uh, you know, across several countries, but I'm going to come up with a hypothetical product. We can call it Product X, and we're going to look at the steps in the process of producing that product. We're going to look at the sale price at each level of distribution, and then we're going to look at something called the value added. Okay, so step one, let's say step one is manufacturing. And let's uh, say step two is fabrication. Fabrication is where we assemble manufactured parts. Let's say that step three is wholesaling. Wholesaling is actually uh, uh, not involved in every business and every product. But in many products, it is involved. What it is is wholesaling is a bridge between the manufacturer and the fabricator and the retailer. In other words, so the retailer doesn't have to deal with 
a number of manufacturers, the wholesaler can actually gather the product, uh, warehouse it, transport it, and then distribute it to retailers. So manufacturers don't have to deal directly with retailers, and retailers don't have to deal directly with manufacturers. Wholesaling actually provides a very valuable function in helping coordinate that distribution between manufacturer and retailer. And then our fourth step will be retailer. Okay, and then of course from the retailer we go to the consumer. So let's say in the case of this hypothetical product that uh, some manufacturing is done and that manufacturing, after that manufacturing is completed, a particular unit is sold for three dollars uh, and these would probably be manufactured parts, are sold to the fabricator. Fabricator buys the manufactured parts, fabricates the product, assembles the product, and then sells it for $8, let's say, to the wholesaler. Wholesaler takes the fabricated product, uh, warehouses it, distributes it uh, through tr a transportation telecommunication system, and actually sells it to the retailer for let's say oh let's say seventeen dollars seventeen dollars and you go oh, wow that's a that's a that's a large markup but remember the products of no use to the consumer unless it is somehow um, moved to the consumer so wholesaling is a vital part um, in the distribution process and uh, let's face it, what good is a tube of toothpaste if the consumer has to drive all the way to the manufacturing facility to get it? Or what value is a cell phone if its uh, parts are manufactured in Asia, it's fabricated in China, but it's not somehow distributed in the United States? Okay, So wholesaling can be a very valuable function and therefore there's a significant markup for it. And then let's say the wholesaler sells it to the retailer for $17. So the wholesaler buys it for eight, sells it for 17, and then the retailer turns around, marks it up, let's say, to 40, and then sells it to the consumer for 40. So the consumer is actually not a step in the distribution process, but the final destination. So the consumer ultimately pays 40 for the product. That's the final value of the product. Now again, you, you can question the markup here from wholesaling to retail, but it's important to remember that you know if you're, you're looking at many retailers, they, they provide the product in a convenient way, they inventory the product, they don't know who's coming in on any given day, but um, they stand ready to supply the product at, you know, at a reasonable price, you know, uh, perhaps any day of the week, perhaps any hour of the day, and uh, they might be open almost all year long. So retailing is a very valuable function. Convenience, people pay for convenience. And the markup at retail is often, uh, it's not profit because, you know, after the cost of goods sold of 17, you also have to pay, you also have to pay for the lighting and the other types of overhead, the building. You have to pay the workers. Uh, there's all sorts of costs, overhead costs, on top of the cost of goods sold. So the profit on this product might be actually very, very low. It just depends on what we're looking at. Okay, anyway, that's really outside of our discussion, so I'll leave that. So now, now we, need to, we need to take a look at the value added. And the value added is a very interesting idea. So we know that the manufacturer added $3 of value to the product. Why? Because they sold the product for $3. The fabricator bought it for three, sold it for eight, so the fabricator added five dollars by assembling the manufactured parts. They added, let's say, five dollars of value to the product. And then the wholesaler bought it for eight, bought the product for eight, uh, you know, transported it, warehoused it, transported it, got it from the manufacturer to the retailer, and they added a value of nine, nine dollars to it. And then the retailer bought it from the wholesaler, bought it from for, uh, bought it from the wholesaler uh, for 17, and turned around and sold it for 40. And they actually add 23 dollars of value to the product. And so, if you add together those value adds, you get you get 40 dollars. Now, notice we do not add up the sale prices. If we added up the sale prices, we'd be double counting. If we added up three plus eight 
that's 11 plus 17 is 28 plus 40 we would have if we added these up we would get $68 however in the process of adding adding these numbers up we'd be counting manufacturing actually four times fabricating three times and wholesaling two times so we'd be double counting so you you do not add up the value of intermediate output you're adding up the value you're only including the value of final output in the GDP calculation so that's why we use a value added approach we're not going to be looking at the sale prices and adding those together we're going to be adding together the value added okay and so we see that if we go back up we go back up to our definition GDP is what? GDP is the value, get rid of our little scrolling function here, GDP is actually the value of what? Final product. And, and by not duplicating, you know, adding, uh, using sale prices and adding intermediate output, the value of intermediate output um, at, sale, at sale price to the calculation, we avoid this double counting problem. Okay? I hope that's clear. Now, let's go to the final point we really want to make here. Let's suppose, I'll use a different color here. Let me get rid of that. Pesky little guy, but helpful. Let's say that the first three steps in the process are done in year one let's say that the last step in the process is done in year two so let's say this product is actually made over two years well we know then by partitioning by partitioning on a value-added basis we know that seventeen dollars of the product was produced in year one so when we go to calculate GDP for year one we're only going to want to count seventeen dollars and then we know that twenty three dollars of that product was actually produced in year two and that's all we're going to want to count for year two uh, of the forty dollars so the forty dollars is actually partitioned into a seventeen dollar value in year one and a twenty three dollar value in year two now let's 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 look at this in another dimension let's say these first two steps are done by China let's say these last two steps are done by the United States. Well, now we can partition the output by country, and we can see that China actually gets credit for eight dollars of value, three plus five. The United States actually gets credit for thirty-two dollars of value. Why? Because they they were involved in the wholesaling retailing process. You can see here a very interesting point. A lot of times the manufacturing contribution is a very small part of the final value of the product. Um, you know, we see the label China on the product and we think, oh, you know, gee, that product was made in China and then people like to extend that, all the jobs that were uh, involved in that and the jobs not involved in the, in the domestic country, the country where the product is used. And people are thinking, wow, China is getting all this, this value. But at the end of the day, the manufacturing contribution in most products is actually quite small. And uh, you'd be surprised, uh, in many products, the wholesaling, retailing contribution uh, is very, very large. And um, you'd be surprised, out of a product that has China on the label, how much of the value of that product actually goes to the United States. Okay, that's a very interesting point, uh, one we won't... Um, labor too long but it's worth noting okay now what we want to do is we want to do a table here that partitions we want to partition uh, by time and, and output so I'm going to set up a table here and I'll have two two columns and I'm going to have I'm going to seek to have two row rows in the matrix so this is a matrix or a table and uh, we can go either way but I'm going to put years on the um, on the top so year one year two and then I'm going to put the two countries over here and going going down um, China and the US okay 
And what we're going to do is we're going to tabulate the output uh, for each country in each year. Well, if we go back up to our table, we can do that. If we go back up to our table, we see that in year one, in year one, which is bracketed here, China did both manufacturing and fabrication, and the value of that product was eight. And that is within year one. So we'll go ahead and come back down. And we're going to put that in our table. I'm going to use a different color here. So $8 of value was added in year one by China. Now, did China do anything in year two? No. China didn't do anything in year two, so that's the end of the story uh, for China. But the United States actually wholesaled the product in year two, if you recall. Excuse me, year one. So let's go back up to the table. Just want to point this out so you can see it, and so I can keep, keep it clear in my mind. So the United States was involved in some of the action in, in year one. So year one had the first three steps. The United States did the wholesaling, so the United States would actually get credit for what? For the $9 uh, that was wholesaled in year one. Okay, so we want to incorporate that into our table. So the United States gets credit. Again, I want to go back to, I think it was this color. And I want to put nine. No, it was not that color. And yeah, we'll just stick with that color. So $17 of output was produced. $17 of output was produced in year one. Eight of it by China, nine of it by the U.S., right? In year two, China didn't do anything. It was just the last step. But the United States did that retailing step, and if we recall, the retailing step was $23. So that retailing step has to be put into year two. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, I apologize for this very interesting scrolling feature. I'm a poor teacher using cheap software to get this job done, so you'll forgive me for using interesting scrolling tools. What was that number? That number was 23. So we're going to put that number here. And that's going to be the, the output in year, year two. Now I need to extend this because I want to bring a total over here as well. So my total, my total here is going to be what? My total is going to be 40, isn't it? Now, What's my total here? Well, this is, this is the output by what? By country. So let me finish my table here. So let me go back to my... So by country, China gets what? China gets, China gets eight of that. And the United States gets what? The United States gets $32 of that. So we've, we've got a matrix here that shows uh, by country by country what was produced as well as by year. And you can see how we were able to partition GDP by country in time. So again, GDP is the dollar value of final output. The value of the final output was 40. It's the dollar value of final output produced domestically. So you only get, you only get credit for it if you pr pr produced it within your geogra geographic boundaries. So dollar value of final output produced what? Domestically within what? A year's time. So that output that was produced in year one is counted in year one. That output that was produced in year two is counted in year two. All right? So again, we can use the value added approach to partition GDP by both time period and country. And we're, uh, we're then in a position to see more clearly how GDP should be assigned among the many countries. We're in, a, we're in a world today where it's very international, it's very integrated, and so it has become increasingly com uh, complex, and it's in increasingly difficult to actually tell what was made domestically and what was de made, what's foreign. And so governments have to try to make these kinds of calls and gather this kind of information and make estimates, basically, of how much was produced where, and then divvy the product up on the basis of both time and location. All right, well, enjoyed sharing this with you and, uh, and uh, hope you enjoyed it as well.